We are here in the Scarborough House um, working on the restoration of the marbling uh, known as faux marble or marbleizing, a painted effect that was uh, excessively used in the uh, Victorian period as well right through today and earlier as well. Victorian was a high period. Um, it's now um, March in 2007. Uh, if we go back to um, the 70s, in the 1970s, I came over from England uh, to create the marbleizing you see here on the walls um, and on the second floor and on the first floor. The um, restoration crew at that time found uh, a piece of um, plaster that was marbleized. So we had a record of the colour and the style that was done. Uh, we believe in the uh, middle, somewhere in the middle of the uh, uh, 1870s, 1880s. That's not really, really sure about that because we have a record of that, but we believe that period. So what we did was, um, you'll see as we go through a little restoration process here, we've had some water damage here. So here's some of the uh, work that I did in the 1970s. Um, first of all, the, the plaster is painted into a creamy base colour, which we'll probably see in a moment. And then the glazes are put over. Um, I guess just before that, we have to mark out the blocks. And these are standard actual blocks of three by two uh, to give the appearance of, um, of pieces of sienna marble. Uh, of course, in that period, um, marble was very difficult to obtain in America, very hard to transport, uh, very expensive, and it was very much easier to have a, a tyrant worker, um, sometimes indentured servant, um, uh, often traveling craftsmen, uh, would create uh, the illusion of marble on walls. So here we are here and the colours that we used here are all earth pigments of raw sienna, burnt sienna, burnt umber, um, some black and these are all colours that were available at the time and the process is uh, using first of all an opaque paint and then the glazer, all these glazes are mixed while everything is uh, wet and put on while it's wet and then uh, produce this marble. Everything is done freehand. There's no templates or um, nothing mechanical here. It's all done uh, freehand in the style. Each block must be different, but each block must be in the family of Sienna. Here you see some of the uh, work they did in the 1970s to match the original from the 19th century. Unfortunately, we could have a flat roof here uh, the pain of all building, uh, we have now water damage, which the good part about having uh, sienna blocks is that we can actually take blocks and recreate them again without having to do the whole wall. If we had a situation where it wasn't blocked and it was done as a, f a fantasy marble, we would have to paint the whole wall out, as is the, the big advantage is that we can paint these blocks out. So previously the painters have come in here, replastered the damp has gone, and now we can we have the uh, base paint put on. This is a, a satin oil based paint and a regular um, standard Benjamin Moore colour that we chose, and it was original for the, where we took the colours from the 70s. And then you see this is now ready for us to start the uh, marbleizing process. Okay, we're ready to begin uh, the next process. This has been dry for a few days now, so everything has to be hard underneath. Um, the technique is, you, is using regular brushes and rags and uh, probably about, we've got about five colours of burnt sienna, burnt amber, raw sienna, black, a uh, little yellow uh, to create this illusion. And as you'll see, we'll be putting on these colours and working everything while it's wet, letting it set for a while, then come back and putting in the, um, the veining of the marble.
Oh, let me clear this one here. Alright, we're ready to go now and uh, speed is the essence, each block must be done um, within a minute or two because of the drying time. So first of all, this is the raw sienna glaze being put on and we're going right up against the original work that was done over 30 years ago by, by our company. And using a four inch brush here with this, this is raw sienna, a little umber. I'm working this colour in so that we get it fairly solid and even. And then while this is wet, we'll take the various other colours, a little burnt sienna, This is all black. And these ver various uh, colours will be um, changed in the amounts each block, but still keeping the the family of sienna. But we can control it by by just adjusting a little bit of this uh, each one a little bit more of black, so in this one a little bit less. Umber to uh, create the illusion of variations of marble. This here we're using a, a two and a half inch brush uh, just to stiff all the colours together a little bit. And then we can play with the colour now as we're working fairly quickly. We can actually start to put in a little bit of the character of the sienna like this. And just keeping an eye on the time so we don't overwork it or wait too long before next process. And we take a rag here and start to break it up a little bit. The, uh, the character of Marvel is depth. And so with the, as we're dealing with paints, we've got to get as much depth as we can. So we use translucent colors to let the the bases bleed through each time. Once this part is set for a few minutes, we'll come back and start to put the, the sienna veining in. And we'll take a stippling brush, a little bigger one here, and start to soften. This is still just about pliable. Difficult part of marbleizing and any kind of uh, graining and uh, faux finishing is to be able to work quickly, and it's very hard to learn because one starts and one takes it slowly, and it's hard to get the correct effect. So normally, one when one is learning, uh, you work with a master. So the apprenticeship scheme is very important uh, in this process. So it really is learning on the job. I'll just check the edges here. And we'll let this set for a few minutes and come back and then we'll add the veining. What we'll do here, we'll just clean off this block here. This is a pretty warm day. And this is all affects the drying time. These pencil lines here are typical of a Victorian style. Um, once the marbling is done, We'll come back and emphasize them again. This is a style that uh, is not used so much now, but it uh, generates uh, from um, uh, the Victorian system of using uh, the blocking, just using a simple pencil. Okay, well we've left enough time now, um, probably about 15 minutes now. We're going to go back and 
begin the process of turning this into from a generic stone into looking like sienna and we're going to use the same glazes um, which are now going to uh, interact with the original glaze so we're catching it just hopefully at the right time and here we're using a, a sable pencil brush to begin the uh, light. So the first one we're going to put in with some, is some burnt umber. So there we go. Now this process is one of the hardest to teach an apprentice um, because it's there are very few words to describe um, how to achieve this so it's very much a hands-on process um, there are books that try to explain the, the, the complexity of figuring of marble but um, very difficult to put it into words the, the brush is used a little differently to an artist who would use it to do a uh, maybe a trompe l'oeil or, or a mural and we use a lot of the side of the brush and create what is known when we're teaching as thick and thin so the pressure of the brush creates the variations of the, of the, of the veins in the marble there we want some of the background to come through a little bit and then the second we'll be just softening us down this is the first of two or three colours we'll put in again variations um, on a theme of the sienna we try to variate the uh, the direction of the veining as if a uh, a craftsman was putting in marble blocks and he would like split them up and not have everything running the same way and trying to get some pattern but not too rigid a pattern glaze is made of um, linseed oil and Japan dryers and mineral spirits and a proprietary glaze these are the same kind of uh, pigments and colours that were used in the Victorian period when we refer to it as a colour the Victorians called it majilp or jelp and there was also a system where um, water colours were used not so much in the marbling but in, in the wood graining um, and things like uh, the medium might be uh, beer, stale stout beer or um, milk milk painting um, variations on uh, water colours the, but for marbling it is much better to work in oil because you can release this glaze underneath for a lot longer time and get what we're looking for in this, de in this depth the Sienna is quite a busy marble uh, if we were doing something like a Carrara as the columns downstairs of Scarborough House are done there's a much simpler veining and uh, a lot less busy but the Sienna is quite a very uh, intricate and because the Victorians loved um, pattern and what we will call over the top now we'll take a, a soft cloth and start to just to dab this pushing back the colour into the other glaze at the back and just breaking this everything up to give as much illusion as we can to a real piece of marble if we wait too long to do this um, it will look sticky and wet and if you come too quickly on it um, everything will run and um, it will just be a disaster 
so we have the it's timing and that can do with the um, the heat humidity and also the subject that we're working on so now we have um, created these vein shapes Siena also has what we call ponds and lakes and these are little areas in between the veining here at the discretion of the craftsman which again opens up the pattern and gives us our illusion of depth not taking too much off just a little bit here and there subtlety is uh, name of the game here in this part of the process some marbles this is pulled out very strongly there's a Norwegian pink marble same process but it's very much more pulled out so it's more more boisterous a pattern at this stage here we have some more to do but to make sure that we have caught this because we're doing quite a large section today um, we'll now add some uh, white cream veining to appear um, somewhat like cracks in the sienna which is very typical and here we're just using the Victorians favorite way of creating um, many of their patterns in in wood graining and marble is called thumbnailing and we just use a uh, piece of rag and just an, a fingernail or thumbnail and create these again thick or thin areas just to give that illusion of a of, of lighter vein and so you can see we're pulling out, actually pulling back the cream paint that's underneath and we're going to let this set for a little while and add a little while some raw sienna and some black to it to start to put the character in but we're very close now to the feeling of the original work that was done uh, back in the 70s Okay. getting close to the end of the illusion now we're going to add some fine black veins technique is all different here going to keep it very thin and these will go in a different direction to the the other veins in the marble again hoping to create this illusion of depth we don't do too very many of these there's just be three or four 
into the block like this and stopping obviously right where we get to our join every time. Yeah. We will take so I just soften these a little bit. Not very much because we want these to be have a little bit more character. With the sienna. Uh, we just have one more part to do today uh, and then we're going to let the whole thing dry and we're going to create this illusion here of this little bit of openness and we're going to use mineral spirits and fleck it and spatter it and hopefully open this up just here and there to give again that illusion of depth. Uh, another 10 or 15 minutes has elapsed and we're ready to do our final part that we can work on today on this particular block and then we'll continue to finish all the blocks that have been damaged um, in the same process. At that point then we will let this um, dry and then tomorrow a coat of clear oil base uh, gloss varnish will go on to protect it and also to give you the depth and the sheen of the marble and then the following day the pencil lines will be run over again to emphasize them in the Victorian style. Uh, this last part now, don't try this at home without a license. This is a CVS toothbrush and this is a really neat brush. What we're going to do here is we're going to fleck mineral spirits onto the work and if we've got it right, um, I'm not sure where the camera is going to pick this up, but it will open up little areas um, we may be able to zoom in and see how this looks afterwards but it will open up little areas here of this light spotting and again revealing just enough of the glaze underneath of the, um, with, the, with the cream paint coming through. So we take the brush and literally just speckle in a few areas here like this and hopefully you can see here it's beginning to open up. If we catch it too early, it could be a disaster and everything could run and everything will be spoilt. If we wait too long, uh, nothing will happen. It will just look impressive that we know what we're doing. But here we are, we've caught it just right and here we have that opening up of the background colour coming through. Now we can um, take a break from these, go back to our other blocks, bring them all to this stage and then everything will dry overnight ready for the varnishing tomorrow.